Hey, what's going on guys? Hello and welcome back to the Reality Check video update review. That's right, we're doing an update here with the Anet A8 DIY printer that I got on GearBest.com. Uh, of course, it is one of those uh, cool printers that you know you have to put together yourself. It takes quite a bit of time for some people. It could take you know 12 hours. Some people could take you know five days. It really depends on how quick you want to do this project and how much time you want to spend at once doing it. I've actually seen people do it within a few hours. So um, really, if you have a lot of expertise with this stuff, it'll be a lot easier. If it's your first time doing it, it's going to take a little bit longer. But anyway, once you get it up and running, there are a lot of modifications that you can do for it. So I want to go over some of the modifications that I've done today. I also do want to mention that there's going to be a coupon code in the description of this video. So if you want to save a little bit of money, you can pick it up for about, I think, what, $160 right now. Um, anyway, what we're going to do here is get into the upgrades. So get excited, get excited. Excited, excited. Pretty printer, pretty printer, printer. Okay, putting that away. Okay, so where should we get started? Um, uh, first we have, oh, actually, you know, here's some cool little, here's some cool, check this out. Take, huh, huh, spinners, right? Spinners are sweet. You can, you can have spinners. Ah, uh, yeah, you got those? That's pretty sweet. I actually made those spinners because I had some extra bearings as some of those upgraded items that I've got required some of those bearings. So I'm gonna quickly just list off some of the things that I got for this printer and then we're gonna go take a look at them and, and actually look and see what they do for the printer. So what I did is I bought some zip ties, some braided cable, an eight by eight PEI sheet, a MOSFET heating bed module. We also got an inlet module socket for the power supply. Um, we've got a 12 volt 30 amp power supply as opposed to the 21 that we had before. We got two times aluminum pulleys plus a new belt. We also got some ball bearings. Those are the things that you use for the old spinners. And uh, lastly, we did also get the Raspberry Pi to help out with the whole situation, which included the SD card. Um, to, in order to get that working with the whole system, we had to get a 12 volt to 5 volt adapter, um, which allowed us to power it from the printer. Uh, also, we needed to get a heat sink that we had to put on the Raspberry Pi. I, I ended up putting some silicone wire to help extend some of the wires as well. And uh, we did some super lube, synthetic super lube, to make sure that everything just was nice and smooth. So let's take a look at some of these things and see how they actually really help the printer perform better. So in order to get this printer going, I just take the power cable and I can just plug it in. And as soon as you plug it in, and as soon as you plug it in, you'll notice that the light comes on right there. Uh, of course, I can just hit that button and then that will instantly turn the printer on. Yay, printer's ready to go. And you'll notice something else over here. We've got a red and green light inside there as well. A red and green light. I wonder what that is talking. I wonder, what, I wonder what's going on there with all that stuff. So let's take a look over here and uh, I'm going to show you my workflow real quick. So while we take a look at these upgrades, we're gonna actually get the printer printing. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this down. I'm gonna show you what I do, um, which is kind of cool here. Okay, so what you're used to doing is jumping into Cura here, and then from, from this program, you can either save the G codes, and that allows you to print on the 3D printers um, by saving it to the little memory cards. Uh, the problem is going back and forth to the memory card really, really is a pain in the butt with these printers. So what I've done here is I've made it very simple. I don't ever have to go to the, mem or to the printer. I never actually have to take the memory card out of it. I've got the program Octopi using the Raspberry Pi. It allows me to simply take an IP address and then put that IP address into the computer and then from there I can just start it up and as you'll see right here Octo Octoprint starts right up. It's going to of course show you, I'll move myself over here, it's going to show you what I have access to right there. I can actually just, uh, I can drop any STL file or OBJ file into this and it will automatically slice it based off of the printer profile that I put into here. Or I can simply take a G code and I can drag it and I can drop it into here, the one that we were just looking at, for example, and I can click it right there. And then once we've got it, I can go right over here to G code viewer. It's going to load that G code and show you, hey, this is exactly step by step, you know, layer by layer, how it would build this thing. And I can see this right here in the printer um, which is actually being, like I said, hooked up through a Raspberry Pi. So from this, I can do a time lapse with the camera terminal, and I can actually see control. <gasps> what's that? What's that? What's this? What's go? What's what's going on? What's go? What's up, guys? Hey, what's going on? It's the it's the printer, and it's in it's in real time. So uh, we've got this awesome little time lapse that we can see, and that allows us to you know check out the printer and see what's going on. But what's really really cool about this is I can actually with my keyboard right now with my, with my keyboard I can move this. So as you can see, I'm moving it around right now. Look, like I'm moving my keyboard. It's 
So I can just, you know, I can control the printer from, you know, wherever I'm at. And not only that, not only that, you think, well, hey, that's pretty cool, Caleb. That sounds like, you know, it's, it's, it's a really cool situation. Well, why don't I jump back on there? Um, but not only that, but from my phone, we've got this cool, cool little program called uh, Printoid. And of course, with Printoid, I can jump on my phone from right here on my phone. I can actually tell the thing to move. And as you can see, the printer's moving while I'm pushing it here on my phone. If I tell it, I can tell it to go up. You know, I can also control the heat. I can throw on OBJs. I can throw on STLs from my phone. I can download them from my phone, import them into this program, and then print them immediately. I can also keep an eye on it and record time lapses. So it's just, it's, it's extremely incredible with how much control you have over this printer that, you know, you can create yourself. And then, of course, if I want them to go home, I can put some home buttons. It's going to first put this one home, and then it's going to bring the other one home. So um, it's just, it's, it's an amazing amount of control. I can also view the camera from my phone, and uh, that allows me to be anywhere, anywhere at all. And I can, of course, keep control of my printer. And if anything goes wrong, you know, by goodness, you can, you can fix it, you can save it. So, all right, let's go ahead and take a look at the actual stuff. Let's get this guy printing. So we're going to go ahead and put it home, as it just did right there. I'm going to exit the app on my phone. All right, exiting the app on my phone. We're gonna go ahead and keep this guy open right there just for a moment. Also, you can put all kinds of different plugins on here. I've put a plugin that tells me kind of based on the material that I'm printing, based on how much time it's taking, it gives me an approximate cost of how much this takes me to print. And the cost, you know, the estimate cost for this spinner would be 91 cents. Uh, it's just really, really nice when you wanna know how much you should charge for something when it comes to printing things, especially when you have a cost indicator on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit this print button. And as soon as I hit that button, you're gonna see everything's gonna go. I'm gonna go back to the temperature. It's gonna tell the bed what temperature to go to. It's also gonna tell it um, what temperature for the nozzle to go to. So let's go ahead and run over here and take a look at this stuff. Okay, and here's the 3D printer. We've got the ANET upgraded printer right here. First thing you're gonna notice is the power supply on here is a little bit bigger than the original one that it came with. This is the 30 amp power supply. It is, uh, you know, recommended to me by several different people and I, of course, think that it is the better one now that I've been using it. It seems to get everything going a lot faster than before. It really does work. Not only that, but uh, you have to <laughs> print some adapter pieces for it on there and you have to, of course, print the new box for it to get it to work in there properly. But once you do those things, it just makes the whole thing a much better user experience. Um, so we've got this put on there, really, really nice and sleek. It allows us to put the cable in there and you know, plug and play without that really annoying cable that was on there before. Because um, it comes with the cable, you have to just keep on to it and that's just, it's, not, it's not, not as safe and it's not as cool. So anyway, I've got that right there fixed up. So the next kind of thing we're gonna take a look at, just since it's right here, is of course the, the cable tension right here, or the, the belt tension that we have. The way that this is is originally the belt is actually put in between this piece right here and there's no way to actually tighten the belt um, other than when you're putting the belt on over here just doing the best that you can. So what this does allow us to do is it allows us to actually push the belt out and it allows us to make the belt really really tense right here much stronger which allows for more accurate print because um, there's no slippage at all happening over here on this motor. So this is a really, really nice little tool to have. It's very simple and easy to add on. Um, just make sure you try to do it when you're building your printer. Otherwise, you have to pull this piece off and then add it and then put it back on, which is kind of a pain in the butt. So anyway, uh, the next add-on piece that we have over here, I'll just take a look, is the support piece. We've got a nice support piece that you can see right here. This is a 3D printed support piece. Uh, most all of these things I'm getting on Thingiverse.com, and a few of them we modify a little bit, but most of them you don't have to do anything. Of course, we've also got another cable tensioner right there. So it's like basically the same thing we've got going on over here, uh, except the same thing going over here. This allows us to make this belt nice and tight. And of course, this is just basically something that we can just screw uh, to the right, which makes it tighter. Screw to the left, makes it looser. And I really like how this one is just kind of an all-in-one piece. It's also a little bit more sturdy because it goes through both of the holes. I've used a few different ones, and this one tends to be the best one, as far as I'm concerned. So I really like that. Um, lastly, this, uh, not lastly, but this belt right here is a, uh, is an add-on belt. The belt that comes with it is just, it's, it's a lot more noisy and uh, it just tends to be a little bit more stiff. This belt is a little softer, it's a little more pliable and it just seems to be a little bit more higher quality. So I like using this one. It's Like I said, it's also just, it's quieter. That's probably one of the best things about it. Um, underneath here, you're going to notice that you can't really see there in the distance, but what we've got is we've got the different plastic pieces on the bottom. So we don't actually have to have the original pieces to hold this in and that's, uh, 
kind of a benefit right there. Those ones also allow you to do some belt tensioning on it um, as well. So, okay, so moving on, we've got quite a bit of different little uh, things here that I want to just quickly go over. So we've got some brackets here that we can add on for stability. Also, we've got, oh, it's starting to go, starting to go. Yep, it's going to start printing here in just a moment. So. As it's printing, we are going to continue talking. Right up here, we've got these little, the bearings that I was talking about earlier. We actually put these in here to keep some stability between these pieces. Um, before, normally these just kind of hang there in the air and there allows for some kind of wobbling going on there. By putting the bearings in there, you keep it just stable and there's just no fluctuations going on at all. And as you can see on both sides, it just kind of holds it up in there. If it spins, it spins nice and freely. So no, no problems there. We've also, of course, got the wire here that keeps the, the plastic in place. And if you haven't noticed by now, we've got the spool holder. Uh, this one originally goes on the edges over here, but that's way too wide and far apart. It's nice when you want to use the huge spindles, but I don't really think you should be putting those huge ones on top of this printer. Um, something like this, it does not wobble at all. It doesn't have any movement um, at all when the printer's moving at all. So there is no wobbling happen, happening whatsoever. Um, this thing stays nice and sturdy while it's up there. Um, and we of course have the, the printed pieces that allow us to have the adapter that keep it right on uh, the display. So it's just, it's a really nice fit. I like how it keeps the, the spool away from the sides. I also like how it keeps it just a little bit taller and less wide. So it allows for easier places to, for placement. So, okay, so if you haven't noticed by now, we've also got these, you know, these awesome little cable, you know, I don't know if they're even called exactly, the, the cable ladders. And that basically is one of the coolest little pieces that you can have on here because it just makes it look a lot nicer rather than having that really annoying braided cable going up and around things. It just, you know, stays out of the way and has a place that looks nice. So uh, this piece right here, it was making some noise originally. So I also did add some of that synthetic lube in there, which makes it nice and quiet. So I don't hear it at all. It's really a nice and quiet print. So as you can see it going down there, it's already getting going, printing up. So uh, we've got this piece right here, which I haven't actually finished. I'm going to add a little bit of a piece in here as well. So I'm just going to keep that there for now. Um, we've got this button that we added on here, which allows us to just push down and add the plastic a little bit easier. And of course, you can't see we've got the piece right there, which helps the plastic go right into the hole into the right spot. And over here, we have the exact same thing. Another one of the cable ladders going on the side. Mine is a little bit longer than most people make theirs, but uh, I think that it just uh, keeps it nice and easy out of the way. And I like having it over here rather than uh, you know put somewhere else. So let's go ahead and take a look at the cable management because that is one of the, the last but cooler things. So we'll go over here and take a look at that. So there's also a camera right there. We've got our Raspberry Pi camera in the back taking a look at our print as it goes. So over here. Um, I'm not going to open it up because there really is no reason to, but I've got the, the board right in here. I've of course got a MOSFET that I attached inside of here. I've got all my cabling that comes right out of here in these braided cables, and they actually don't need to move at all. They, they just stay exactly where they are. It goes all the way up to the top um, with the cabling that there is right there, and they all stay out of each other's way. Nice and easy. As you can see, they're kind of sturdy. They're nice and sturdy. They don't actually, you know, get stuck or move or anything like that. So anyways, um, they have been cut just perfectly to be the right length to go, like I said, all the way to the top. And these boxes are nice and easily put in here. Um, lastly, I made sure that uh, the Raspberry Pi, just in case I wanted to, you know, basically unplug it without unplugging the whole printer, I do have that piece right here. So if I need to unplug the Pi by itself, I can. And here is the cabling that comes out for the Raspberry Pi and goes right there to the camera. And there you can see the printer from behind. I've got one cable coming out the back. Oh, got a Skype call. Got a Skype call. VR spies. So as you can see, the power box actually comes out with one cable going in. You can't see any other cables unless you look over here. You can see the two coming out. And then I have the one cable, which is, of course, the Raspberry Pi cable coming out the back and then going in through that loop right there. I kept it a little bit separate from the rest of them, just in case I wanted to ever change it or replace it or do something different with it. Um, also, I added it last, so that's another reason for that. So that's kind of what the cabling looks like right in there. And of course, there it is running from this side. As you can see it going and going and going. This thing is a champion. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And we have the Raspberry Pi hooked directly up to the printer. You can always see when it's working, it is wireless in there. It is the Raspberry Pi 3. So, and there's the, there's the new spinner that I've got going right there. Come on, spinner. Come on. Let's do it. So there we go. Whew. Okay, so now we're back. And you can see right over here, kind of the bed actually stays right where it's supposed to. You can see the printer and how long it took. It took about, you know, a minute and a half, two minutes to get to temperature all the way. 
um, from the moment that it started, from the moment that, you know, where it is right now. And we can see how the print is doing. We can move this camera if we need to. Hey, -oh, what's up guys? Woo! As I told you before, I can view all of this on my cell phone. You know, this printer is now finally freaking awesome. Um, the, the Taz 6, of course, that I have over there is phenomenal. Uh, you know, after spending so much time getting this printer working to where it is, it makes me really, really appreciate these other printers. So just because uh, you can go get a cheap printer and that you can make it awesome doesn't mean there's no value in the expensive printers. Um, I really, really, really genuinely love uh, my Taz. And, and part of that is just because everything works, it's all made to be easy. If I wanna add something or you know, just make things you know, really cool to it, it's, just, it's very simple to do. Um, of course, the price tag is there, but the price tag comes with, with you know, also time. So it, it, I spent a lot of time making this thing what it is right now. Um, I'm very happy with it. I do hope, of course, if you have an A-Net or an A8 or any kind of an i3 Prusa or any DIY printer out there, you can do very similar things to this, even if they're not exactly the same. Just go to Thingiverse.com and take a look and see what works for you. Um, I am going to be adding, uh, what is it? I'm going to be adding one of the Raspberry Pis and Octoprint to my Taz 6 because I want to be able to do the same thing. So I got some heat sinks. I, of course, got the 12 volt to 5 volt um, power adapter. And I did get another Raspberry Pi 3, which these things are just the, the coolest little things when you get them. So if you haven't played with the Raspberry Pis and you're into technology, make sure you get one and start playing with it because there's so many things that you can do with these and installing different softwares. Um, of course, if you have a 3D printer, by installing Octoprint on the Raspberry Pi direct through an image, um, you can, you know, do that stuff pretty darn easily. So um, I do have a whole list of how you can get the Octopi started and, and, and ready to go. And, and I'll probably make a video on that in the future. But the wonderful thing is the internet is full of a lot of videos already with how to get this going with your 3D printer. Um, so anyways, I don't want to keep talking too much. I've already made this video pretty darn long. I do hope that you guys enjoyed it. And uh, of course, if you, like I said, have an Anet A8 printer, I will attempt to put all of the links in the bottom of all the Thingiverse files that I have. Um, probably, I'll probably just put one bulk folder in there that has all of those files and you can pick which ones you want and which ones you don't want. Um, so anyways, take a look. Hopefully this is a good useful tool for you guys. I'll see you in the next video. Later. Bye. Start recording. Wow, I would have started coming and doing my whole thing without even being recording. That would have sucked.